Okay, so let's look at a few more. Um, okay, so let's say we had a benzene, right, with an amine on it. Okay, so this would be basically amino benzene. Um, that's a Z. Okay, so um, if you have two, right, it would be diamino, right? So let's say you had another one down here. We could say uh, this would be um, M, right? M diamino benzene. Um, or you could say 1, 3, of course. You don't have to use the letter indication, but um, you would, the, the same rules, if you're naming it as a branch, the same rules will apply all the time. So if you have more than one, you have to put the prefix. If you have something where you must put the number in, you need a number for every branch. Those rules have not changed. Okay, so let's take a look if we are naming it um, with more than one carbon group on it. And I'm going to show you a few different ways. So over here, so this is a secondary amine now, a secondary example, because we have um, nitrogen with two different carbon groups on it. Okay, so um, if you are using the, I'll first go through this with the branch example. Okay, so if you're naming the amine as a branch, you have to choose the carbon that's on the nitrogen as being the parent for the one that's, I should say, the longest chain of carbons. So if I have a methyl versus a propyl, my propyl is going to be my parent, right? So that would be propane. So my nitrogen group is the branch, right? So I have one amino. One amino propane. Okay, but we have to indicate one amino propane is not enough. The one amino propane basically says that we have three carbons, they're all single bonds, and we have an amine group on carbon number one. But we have to have a way of indicating, okay, well, what about this? What about this methyl group? All right, so what you would do is you would have to have um, an N prefix. Actually, if you can make a correction in your note here. The N prefix is going to be added to indicate what else is on that nitrogen. And it always goes in the front of your entire name. So you can have a bunch of different branches and you put them in alphabetical order, but if there is something on this amino branch, it goes at the front. So for example, I'm gonna say N-methyl, one, a dash n methyl one amino propane so let's talk about this all right so the propane is three carbons all single bonds right of course that means that on carbon number one of this propane we have an amine group which means we have a nitrogen and this part at the beginning means on this nitrogen that's part of this amino it's not just hydrogens we have a methyl group that is attached to it so depending on how many carbons that are there, you would have to have multiple N names. I'll show you some more in a second, okay? Um, so let's talk about this if we wanted to name it with the nitrogen being the parent. So let me just erase this for a second, right? So if we want the nitrogen being the parent, your parent name would be just amine, like I mentioned before. The other carbons that are on this, so this methyl and this propyl, are basically now branches coming off of the nitrogen. So you would name these in alphabetical order. All right, so we have methyl, one propyl, amine. The number one in this case is not actually indicating where on the amine um, it's attached to but it's actually saying which carbon on the propyl is attached to the nitrogen itself. So um, the number kind of has a different meaning here when you're doing it as um, a parent, okay? I do find that secondary and tertiary are easier to name in this way because you're just naming the amine as the nitrogen and then you just kind of list everything that's coming off of it as if they were branches, okay? But either one is acceptable. Um, let's take a look at some more examples. So let's say I had, um, no, 
know, I say I have a, something like this. Maybe I have a cycle coming off of it. Right? Okay. So I have a cyclopropyl and then I have a butene, right? So um, let's, let's name this as if this is the parent, okay? So remember, this is a secondary amine. I'll show you a tertiary amine in a second. So we have nitrogen with a cyclopropyl, and then we have a, a butyl, basically. So our parent name here is going to be amine. And alphabetical order, the butyl will come before the cyclopropyl. So remember, the cyclo part is not, not what you look at for alpha order. It's the actual, like, original carbon name. So this is like pro, this is basically a propyl and this is butyl. So we have to also indicate that it's on carbon number two. So we can actually call this S butyl, right? If you remember that butyl, when it's attached at the second carbon, it has a special name, just kind of like isopropyl, right? Same deal. So S butyl, and then we have cyclopropyl. Right? So we name the amine as the parent. So the circle here is the parent. And then we just list off the different carbon things that are attached to the nitrogen. If we were to name this in the other way, the parent in this case, so I'll use maybe I'll use a different color. So let's say the parent is this now. So my parent would be butane. Right? And on carbon number two, I have my amino, so it's two amino butane, but I have to have a way of saying, okay, well, there's a cyclopropyl on that nitrogen. So I would have to have an N cyclopropyl, if you put, a, 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 put an R there. So N dash cyclopropyl two amino butane. So in this case, butane is my parent. On carbon two of the butane, I have an amino group. And uh, if there's something else on that amino group, you have to indicate that with the nitrogen symbol at the front there. Okay, so let's look at a tertiary one and then we'll kind of move on. Um, let's see, I had, let's do a pentane. We'll do a nitrogen with, uh, let's do an ethyl. And then we'll do a methyl. Okay, so it's a tertiary here. Because we have three different, well, they don't have to be different, but we have three carbon groups coming off that nitrogen. So in this case, right, we have um, one, two, three, four, five. So we have pentane. So let's name it first as if the nitrogen is the parent. Okay, so our parent is amine. So now we're just going to literally list off everything that's here in alphabetical order. So we have methyl, sorry, methyl, then we have ethyl, and then we have a pentyl. So here we would have uh, ethyl, right, uh, methyl. And then now we would need a number because we have to say where is the carbon that's attached to that amine. So this would be then three pentyl, three pentyl amine. So ethyl, methyl, these guys don't need numbers because it's only, it's either one or one. So ethyl, methyl, three pentyl amine. So the parent is the amine, the nitrogen, and we're saying that there's an ethyl on the nitrogen, there's a methyl on the nitrogen, and there's a pentyl attached to the nitrogen at carbon three. Now let's do a different color and we'll use the red. So now let's say we had our pentane, as being the parent, right? So we have pentane here. So on carbon number three, we have our amino. So it'd be three amino pentane. Okay, now in front of the amino though, we have to say the things that are on that nitrogen. This would go in alphabetical order as well. So we would have N ethyl, right? Dash N methyl dash so the n almost think of the n is kind of like when you have to put a number in front the n is indicating where is this ethyl 
Oh, it's on the nitrogen. Where is this methyl? It's on the nitrogen. And the nitrogen, of course, is from that amino branch. Okay, so both of these names are correct. Okay, when you're doing them, you should be able to name it both ways. So, for example, if I gave you this name and told you to draw it, or if I gave you this one and told you to draw it, you should be able to draw from both of those. Or if I gave you the names, you should be able to, or opposite, if I gave you, I'm sorry, if I gave you this image, you should be able to name it in either way. But um, if I give you the picture, I'll accept either one of these, okay? So you have to have the ability of doing both, but in terms of if you're gonna name something, I will accept either name because they're both correct. Okay, so let's look at a reaction if we wanted to make an amine. There's only really one reaction that um, amines can undergo, and that's essentially to produce one. So what do we need? So the nitrogen, as I mentioned, is coming from that ammonia group. So that's actually the original, like the origin of the nitrogen from the amino. In order to add this onto a carbon, you need an alkyl halide. So meaning you need halogen to be somewhere on your carbon group. So what ends up happening is um, one of the hydrogens from the ammonia and the halogen from the carbon group come together to make a compound. So hydrogen chloride, or if this is fluorine or bromine, depending on whatever it is, and the nitrogen will basically attach itself to wherever that halogen was. So you'll notice now we have the amino on the same carbon where the halogen used to be. Okay, so you can do this reaction multiple times to make secondary and tertiary amines, but every single time you do need an alkyl halide. So I'll show you an example. Let's say we were to take this and react it again. Okay, so I took this exact same compound and just drew it out larger, so you can see all of the uh, atoms. And let's say we were gonna add a methyl. Okay, so our methyl has a bromine on it, let's say. Oh, for some reason that dash is not going. Okay, all right, so for this reaction, one of the hydrogens that are on this nitrogen and this bromine will come together to make hydrogen bromide. And the carbon will essentially attach itself to where that hydrogen was just removed. So the other part of the molecule, all of this other portion stays exactly the same, except now we have uh, the methyl group on that nitrogen. So you can see here that we've now made a secondary um, amine. So in order to add on, let's say instead of this hydrogen that's here, if we wanted to add another carbon group, we would have to do the same thing again. You would take the secondary amine, you would react it with a carbon group that has a halogen on it, and then essentially that carbon where the halogen used to be would attach to where this hydrogen is currently. Okay, so it's the same process, it's the same mechanics over and over again. Um, the key being you need to have a halogen and you need to have a hydrogen that's on the nitrogen that's able to be removed. All right, so amides. So amides, as I mentioned, is essentially where you have a nitrogen that is attached to a C double bond O. The nitrogen can have carbons on it or they could be hydrogens, it doesn't matter. Um, it is very similar, especially even when we do our naming, to when we named and looked at esters. So the only difference is instead of having an oxygen beside the C double bond O, it is a nitrogen group, okay? Um, in terms of um, properties, right? So remember this carbonyl C double bond O is polar. Of course, the CN and CO bond are both polar, okay? Now, in terms of uh, intermolecular forces, it actually will depend on if these groups on the nitrogen are hydrogens or if they are carbons. If you have a hydrogen, that means you have hydrogen bonding, but if they're both carbons, that means you do not. You have just dipole, dipole, and LDF. So really, when you're looking at structures and comparing the different properties, it depends on the molecule you are looking at. Okay, so just for interest sake, um, if you are in biology or if you've taken it already, um, this is essentially when we refer to peptide bonds, that is the amide link here. So that's what's connecting to build proteins, right? The little amino acids connect via peptide bonds.